Good evening, folks. Ken Hovind here and the crew at Dinosaur Adventureland in Lenox, Alabama. Come join us. We're having a lot of fun. It's good rain today. Amen. Still had to give a bunch of tours, man, all over the place on the four-wheeler. It is March 11th, 2019. Bring your group down to camp at Dinosaur Adventureland. How are your kids liking it so far? Excellent. This is the place, isn't it? We love it. Man. Uh, teachers, you can bring your students for a field trip. We had a group come today that I thought we'd never get over here. The, the road crew cleaning up the roads around the county from the prison. I stopped a couple days ago uh, and said, hey, why don't you bring them to Dinosaur Adventure Land? And they did. <laughs> Took the whole tour today. They spent, th awesome. they spent all day today here. The road crew from the prison. Thank you, man. And it was great. They loved it. Uh, first, they liked just being out of prison all day. And uh, so come on back. Bring them, bring them anytime you want. They want another tour. Okay? They loved it. Yeah. yeah. They almost made one of them puke on the swing. <laughs> on the swing? <laughs> like, that was awesome, man. I said, are you confused? <laughs> no. And within three seconds on that swing, he was completely confused. So that, confused. That, that, <laughs> we, so I love that. We said, go over and hug that tree. That tree's not moving right yeah, now. Yeah, uh, one of the guys like, ah, you ain't going to get me like that. But I, I love it. <laughs> it was hilarious. The tattoo's all over him. Uh, awesome. Anyway. April 21st is the anniversary, one year anniversary of being open. And we have a lot to do before then, but come on down and see. Oh, I forgot. The, uh, this is the demonstration that it takes millions of years for layers to form. So just for those who believe in evolution, we're going to let it go in the background here. And you can see this took about 9 million years. It just happened though. Uh, oh, there goes another 2 million. There it goes. Yep. Here comes this one down the side. We're going to get a white layer. That indicates about 42 million years. Yeah, you, it's obvious to anybody who studied geology, I mean, hello, that took a long time. So we'll let that happen. Okay, uh, no debate at University of Michigan, or where was it? Wisconsin, yesterday. Got in last night at 11 o'clock. 60 professors were asked, would you be willing to debate and defend evolution? University of Milwaukee, University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. They all said no. What's that noise? How many of them admit that it to be in pro evolution? Well, most of them, that's obviously what they teach. I mean, I saw their textbooks. I got some of their textbooks while I was there, some of the used ones. Same stuff every time. The lies in the textbooks. We'll get to that in this series later. Okay, boot camp speakers are going to be for June 14, 15, 16. Don Boyce was here all day today and last night. Took the tour. He and his wife went around with me, and we had a blast uh, talking to him. He's a brilliant guy. He's 84 years old. Oh, wow. Doesn't look 84, does he? No, I didn't no. know he was 84. Wow. And sharp as a tech. He was uh, Indiana House Representatives for like eight years, uh, and just really knows his stuff on a lot of topics. I said, please cover stuff on Islam. He said, Brother Hovind, this is the growing threat rapidly here in America. We're going to face this soon, coming soon. Okay, projects to finish. The bathroom in the man cave. Who's here to help? Somebody showed up today to help get all the tile work done. Yeah. He's down camping out down by the lake. Yeah, yeah. The lights in the man cave, are they done? Mm -hmm. And the staining all the wood is not done though, right? The trim and all that? Uh, the trim's trim. The greenhouse is, what, how, how close, Cindy? I don't know how to answer that question. It'll never be done. Uh, you guys are doing the, the second flower boxes. Yeah, the second flower box has got probably four more inches of, of dirt. dirt. And then a little bit on the floor, the dinosaur footprints. Right, and, and Cindy can plant her flowers ant bite free. Ant bite she, free? Yeah, she got attacked by ants today. There's fire ants in the front. And her side. Life is tough, and then you die. <laughs> That's a good part. That's a good part, okay. But the good news is in that dome, they'll be able to grow exponentially in a short amount. We'll have lots of ants. Yes. Yes, huge. very good, okay. <laughs> Let's see, the merry-go-round never got grease, did that? Uh, Rich, that's on your list, okay. Your list is longer and longer. What's on your list is coming up next year. Okay. If you want to come help with all the floors in the man cave and the science center demo room, finish the girls' bathroom. License plate of source is looking good, brother. Now you're going to fill in the middle and Amen. got the outline pretty much done? Yeah, the outline will be done if, if wherever I'm needed is where... Yeah. A lot of people sent us license plates from all over the United States, and we're going to put them on there. And that's going to be a place where we have benches to go sit and pray for prisoners because most of the plates are made by prisoners someplace in the, in the state, yeah. and to pray for people in the different states. So that'll be a prayer reminder, as well as a cool looking... Hebrews 13.3, brother. Which is, start me off. Um, remember those... 
in yeah, bonds. In bonds yeah. As yeah. you are also bound yourself. Yeah. You know, if we lose a good brother or sister, you know, to um, imprisonment or something, it's like losing. It's unreal. You know, it's like losing a. So how long you been out? Christ. Me, I've been out. Today is the 11th. I have been out now 10 days. 10 days. And I'm telling you, I'm... It's, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like unto them that dream. The storm is over now. storm's over now. That's yeah, it's awesome. awesome. Lots to do. Deck and walls for the dining hall. I forgot to take that off. Somebody paid for that. We haven't done it yet. It's on the list to do soon. Uh, sidewalks and concrete. We have a lot of concrete to do around here. If you're good at concrete, come on down spend a couple days and just help us pour a bunch of sidewalks to keep the mud out of the building. And the driveways. Extend the Science Center roof. If you're coming from Bristol, Tennessee, please let us know. We need to get that down here. Drywall, let's see. Shelving for the new office up there. Haven't even started on that. It's going to be a bunch. Motorhome hookups. Haven't started on that. Converting the rooms. Replace the van for the ministry trips. We haven't done that. You replaced the battery, though. Yep. Starts good. I think that was the problem. It's Runs good. Good every time. Probably had a bad cell on the battery. I think it had a loosen up behind the wheel. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> but a guy wants to donate a van from Massachusetts. If you'd like to drive it down, that would need to come down from Massachusetts. Oh, we had a a bus. Today. Do you have to have a CDL license to drive that? I bus? would think you would have to have a CDL for that, unless it's a personal vehicle. I don't know. I don't, I don't think you do unless you got passengers. Unless you got passengers. We, we can call the DMV and ask them. Right. Okay. So, yeah, I think we'll be able to get it on. Anyway, the Liddy Liddy, Liddy Liddy family visiting from Jacksonville. Got how many kids? Four. Four. Awesome. And they're having a good time? Yeah. Going to be here a couple days and get a bunch of projects. As soon as you got your motorhome parked, I said, here's your list of things to do. Amen. <laughs> That's right. That's any, anybody shows up, hey, welcome to DAL. I can pick up that shovel and go get to work. You know. <laughs> somebody, yeah. said, somebody said, all Hovind does is direct the work. He doesn't do any of the work. How many have worked with me before on any projects? I think I can outwork anybody half my age. Yep. Still, fact, yes, ma'am. He'll try to pull his back picking up a piece of concrete yeah. that he has no. I moved that concrete all by myself, by 280 pounds or whatever it is. Yeah, no problem. Yes, no, ma'am. Uh, Thomas needs help finishing the bathroom in the science center. We got a guy here to do that. He showed up today. Yay. Yep, okay, yeah. So the bus needs to be delivered. The emus. Here's what happened with the emus. Okay. <laughs> I inspired a guy named Ivan up in Massachusetts to start a ministry. He said, Brother Ivan, I love your ministry. I want to do exactly what you're doing up here. I said, please do. You can copy all my ideas, but don't use our name, Cre Dinosaur Adventureland. So he called it uh, Bible Adventureland in Massachusetts. And it's doing, doing great. He has three emus that are incredibly friendly. His little three, little three and four-year-old kids, I think they are, ride them. <laughs> and feed them. They're just they're pets. I mean, they're extremely friendly. But the city came and said, you can't have those in the county or something like that. He said, Brother Hovind, i got to get rid of them. What do I do? He called me while I was in Wisconsin. He's getting frantic. What do I do? He said, I found a guy who will deliver them down there for 900 bucks. I said, Brother, i got about 500 but would the guy take the extra 400 after he gets here? That's all I got. So anyway, we need 300 bucks to pay for the emus. Uh, I'm just going to give him 100 apiece. He said he'd like that if he could. <laughs> 900 to deliver them, and then fencing. You're extending the fence on part of the. We got to get ready for, and then but to do the all, all the rest of it, you figure 2,000 bucks. Sure, about 1,300. But I mean, it, well, we got to extend the whole thing. Extend the whole thing. Yeah, we talked about that for the end. So if you want to help us get some emus down, they're coming anyway. Well, we need some money, like right soon. Okay. Speaking of which, if you want to help support our ministry, uh, go to the 777 Club. Uh, donate now. Uh, donate page on drdino.com if you'd like to help us and make any checks to CSE. If you want to donate specifically for the emus, that would be great. They're coming anyway, real friendly. All else fails, you eat them. Yeah, yes. yeah okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We talked uh, last time about uh, doing our creation seminar and left off with talking about science. Science means knowledge. What do we know? There are many things mixed in with our science textbooks that do not belong in the science textbook. Things that are wild speculation. So if you're going to include like stuff like the Big Bang or evolution or dinosaurs living millions of years ago, you should put all the options in there. There are other alternatives. I'll show you. There are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what isn't true. The other is to refuse to believe what is true. This is exactly what the atheists and evolutionists are doing. They believe what isn't true. The Big Bang isn't true. We'll get into that in just a minute. They believe in evolution. Nobody's ever seen any animal produce a different kind of animal. Nobody, ever. But they believe it happened. It isn't true. The other way to be fooled is to refuse to believe what is true. I'll tell you what is true. In the beginning, 
God created the heaven and the earth. There's no other logical option. Where did God come from? He's just always been. What he claims anyway. He didn't have to come from anywhere. He just is. God said there, Moses, Moses said, hey, who should I tell Pharaoh sent me? God said, you tell him I am sent you. I am. What a thought. I, that won't fit in my brain, you know. I am. The Bible says in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. That means dinosaurs must have lived with Adam and Eve. If he made everything in six days, that's like, duh, they had, dinosaurs had to be there. Everything. Can the universe create itself out of nothing? I googled that today. How can an entire universe come out of nothing? This would seem to violate the conservation of matter and energy. But Michio Kaku explains the answer. So just because they talk and write articles and say things doesn't mean it makes any sense or is true. Is that the guy's name? That's pronounced cuckoo. Cuckoo, okay. Cuckoo, pronounced cuckoo, okay. So they write their articles and do their videos on, yes, the universe created itself out of nothing. You have to be certifiably insane to believe something this dumb. How about Stephen Hawking? Says the universe not created by God. I think he knows better now, doesn't he? Yeah. I am an atheist. Because there is no evidence for the existence of God, that should be all that needs to be said about it. No evidence, no belief. Okay. Dan, we'll see how that works out for you long term. I think you're a fool for believing such a thing. And the Bible says you're a fool for believing such a thing. Hey guys, I looked around a bit. No God up here. <laughs> I searched my closet from top to bottom and could not find the van anywhere. <laughs> That's funny because that, the van doesn't exist. I searched every square inch of the closet. That's crazy. <laughs> you gotta have help to be that dumb. <laughs> the fool has said in his heart, "There's no God." Psalm 14, and again in Psalm 51, you'd have to be a fool to not believe in God. They are corrupt. They've done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And this passage or similar to it is repeated again in Romans chapter 3. Proverbs 1. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You can't even start to be smart until you have an understanding and a fear of the Lord. God, thank you. You're God. I'm Kent. You're creator. I'm creation. Thank you. I love you. I want to serve you. It's not complicated at all. And you don't have to leave your brain at the door to become a Christian. Quite the contrary. Opens up a whole new world. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And boy, they do, don't they? Watch the comments on my YouTube. They delight in their scorning. <laughs> it's hilarious, some of them, you know? Yeah, they want the limelight. And fools hate knowledge. They do. The, the knowledge is obvious. There has to be a designer, a creator. They hate that vehemently hate that because it cramps their lifestyle. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. And there are folks who absolutely despise the idea of a creator or creation. Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens, anybody know how he got his name? Worked on a riverboat, yeah, up and down something, the Missouri. Something to do with measurements of the speed of the, the boat. The measurements of the of knots, speed of knots how, the rope. how many knots in the rope, right. It was six feet between knots. Twain is the string like. And they were measuring the depth of the river. He said, by the mark, Twain. You know, it's two knots, 12 feet deep. Okay. He said, it's easier to fool people than to convince them they have been fooled. Very true. I think people are being fooled about the Big Bang Theory. Seriously fooled by it. The first law of thermodynamics says matter cannot be created or destroyed. Well, the whole world's made out of matter. We're here. So that leaves two options that any, nobody can think of any other options. Somebody made this place or the world made itself. Nobody's thought of a third option except a few folks at Berkeley who say, we're not really here at all. We just think we're here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go back to That's your, go back to smoking that funny grass and we're here, okay? <laughs> so in the beginning, God created is the only logical option I can think of. But the 
atheists and humanists and, uh, and evolutionists don't like that. Religious humanists regard the universe as self-existing and not created. Well, you can regard it however you want, fellas, but that's not science. It's not even common sense. It's just self-existing. How did all that money get in the bank? Oh, it just, it just appeared. No, it doesn't happen, okay? Universes don't just exist. They, somebody have to have a designer. So they, what the best theory they come up with is called the Big Bang Theory. Here is just a 2017 edition of Evolution Hand Textbook. Where was it? What university was this one used at? Uh, Austin. Where? Austin. Austin, Texas, okay. The current universe came into existence about 14 billion years ago. That's 14 G-Y-A, okay? This is, that is 14 billion years ago. Through an expansion, through an explosion, the Big Bang, from an infinitely dense point. I think the densest part of the universe is the brains of the evolutionist who believe this stuff. That is real dense, okay? <laughs> Elementary particles formed hydrogen shortly after the Big Bang, and hydrogen ultimately gave rise to the other chemical elements through nuclear fusion in stars. So when I say the evolutionists have to believe in cosmic evolution and then chemical evolution, I am dead right. They say that's not part of evolution. Yes, it is. You have to get all the elements to evolve in fusion in stars, but you can't fuse past iron without incredible input of energy. That's another story. Anyway, so they teach we came from a big bang. I downloaded stuff today about the big bang. I couldn't believe all the stuff on the internet about it. 13.8 billion years ago, scientists are undecided whether this means the universe began from a singularity or that current knowledge is insufficient to describe the universe at that time. Detailed measurements of the expansion rate of the universe tell us the Big Bang happened 13.8 billion years ago. What they're doing, they're seeing stars recede. We'll talk about that if we get time tonight. The red shift. You look at a star and it looks like the star is moving away based on the Doppler effect of light, the red shift. Okay. And because nearly all the stars give a red shift, they say, oh, all the stars are moving away. That may indeed be true. So then they say, how fast are they moving? Okay, so let's assume we can pick a number. They're moving away X number of miles an hour or miles a second. Then they calculate how far away is it? Okay, do the math, click, click, click. Oh, it had to be 13.8 billion years ago. This is based on the expansion rate. Could they have started expanding, you know, yesterday? Could God have created it fully mature, intact, in place, and then they expanded starting 6,000 years ago? You don't have to go back 2.0, you know, I'll show you a drawing that'll help you with that in a minute. So here's what they teach. History of the universe. One may wonder, what came before? If space-time did not exist, how could everything appear from nothing? Explaining this initial singularity, when, where and when it all began, still remains the most intricate problem of modern cosmology, downloaded today. They don't know. What exploded? Where did it come from? How small is the singularity? How big was this thing that exploded? In the center of a black hole is a gravitational singularity, a one-dimensional point. I don't think anybody can even conceive, you know, three dimensions, length, width, height. This was a one-dimensional point. What exactly is a one-dimensional point? No such thing. Uh, draw me a picture of one. Put one in a box for me. I'd like to, What is a one-dimensional point? <sighs> Gee. Which contains a huge mass of an infinitely small in an infinitely small space. Hold it. Infinitely small? That would be like non-existent. Infinitely small. That's like oxymoron. That's an oxymoron like jumbo shrimp or military intelligence or yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Where or like smart, stupid people. <laughs> yeah. did, you know that, did you know that we can't create a space of nothing? We can't do that? You can't create, no, right. Where density and gravity become infinite. Well, if density is infinite, you guys are seriously misusing the word infinite. Okay. And space-time curves infinitely. <laughs> they like that word. And where the laws of physics, as we know them, cease to exist. Well, this is real handy. They put a bunch of words on paper, and the kids read this and go, Oh, wow, it must be true. I saw it on Wikipedia or whatever it is, okay? Yeah. Physicsoftheuniverse.com. This, this doesn't say anything of any value. 
It, it's making up a story, a, a SpongeBob fairy tale. How big was the Big Bang? What is singularity in the universe? From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. The initial singularity was a singularity of seemingly infinite density, thought to have contained all the mass and space-time of the universe, before quantum fluctuations caused it to rapidly expand in the Big Bang, and subsequently inflation created the present-day universe. Again, fluff and feathers. This is a meaningless, meaning, completely meaningless. <laughs> what exactly? See this. Dot, this dot of infinite smallness, whatever that is, had to have all the matter in the universe. All this was in there. All the gravel in our gravel pit was in there. All of it. Squished into an infinitely small dot. But not only did it have to have all that matter in there, it had to have all the temperature, the heat. What is the total heat of all the stars combined? A whole lot. Don't lick it. <laughs> oh, that infinitely tiny dot had to weigh as much as the entire universe weighs and had to be as hot as all the temperature combined. That plus, what's already burned up, how much of the stars have burned up already, you know? How much heat's been lost? Anyway, 20 years ago they used to teach it was 18 to 20 billion years old. Now they're teaching it's 13.798 or whatever it is. This textbook's on the shelf over there. How was the universe born and how will it end? Most astronomers believe that about 18 to 20 billion years ago, all the matter in the universe, that would be a lot of stuff. By the way, the word universe comes from the words uni, which means single, and verse means spoken sentence. In English, we have verse and prose. So the universe is a single spoken sentence. That'll preach. God said. Let there be. You know, God didn't lift one finger, didn't pound one nail, didn't weld one joint to build the universe. He spoke it all into existence. Everything obeys the voice of God. Everything, all the molecules lined up. Every, everything obeys the voice of God except humans. He's having some trouble out of us right now, but that's going to fix, be fixed one day. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, coming soon to a city near you. Okay, anyway, 18 to 20 billion years ago, all the matter in the universe was concentrated into one very dense, very hot region, a singularity, that may have been much smaller than a period on this page. You have got to be in. You couldn't squeeze a bowling ball into a dot smaller than a period on a page. And you want to put the whole universe in there. Could you think you could squeeze a Volkswagen into a dot smaller than a period on a page? How much energy would that take? It just simply can't be done. They say if you took a mile-long freight train, removed all the space between the atoms, it would probably fit in a thimble. But it would weigh as much as the freight train. That's just one train. How many trains are there in the world, plus the world, plus the tracks they're riding on, plus the hills the tracks are sitting on? You want to squeeze all that into a dot. You guys have got to be certifiably insane to believe something. You've been completely fooled by your education. This is ridic ludicrous, ridiculous. Okay, after many billions of years, all the matter and energy will once again be packed into a small area. This area will maybe no larger than the period at the end of this sentence. Then another Big Bang will occur. Oh yeah, it happens every 80 to 100 billion years. That's the yo-yo universe. Big Bang, Big Squish, Big Bang, Big Squish, Big Bang, Big Squish, back and forth. That's one of the theories taught in a public school textbook right on the shelf over there. I can't believe they actually cut down a tree to print that stuff. Right. Where's Al Gore when you need him? That's what I want to know. Al Gore, get out, do, your, do something, okay? Get out of your mansion. Is that their, is that their hope? They hope. That's their, that's their desperate attempt to not believe in God. They would rather believe a dot of nothing exploded and made everything than to believe there must have been a designer because they don't want to submit to that designer. It's yeah. just that simple. Okay. This textbook author was brilliant. He said, boys and girls, in the realm of the universe, nothing really means nothing. You got to be at least that smart to write a book, okay? Not only matter and energy would disappear, but also space and time. However, physicists theorized that from the state of nothingness, the universe began in a gigantic explosion 16.5 billion years ago. See, it was 20 for a while, then it's 16.5, now it's 13.7, it'll be something else tomorrow. 
keep changing the numbers. So everybody says, oh, well, people have to do a research paper on something, you know, to get their doctor's degree. So they, how old's the universe? Instead of 13.7, it's 13.74. Yeah. Oh, give that guy a degree. Okay. Yeah. Guy. Right, the previous guy. He got his doctor's degree and then somebody else gets one. Okay. <sighs> Physicists theorize from the state of nothingness, the universe began in a gigantic explosion 16.5 billion years ago. This theory of the origin of the universe is called the Big Bang Theory. How big was the universe before it started growing? Most physicists, he begins, agree on the Big Bang Theory which states that 14 billion years ago, the entire observable universe was roughly a million billion billion times smaller than a single atom. Come on. That's pretty tiny. How do you measure that? And where did it come from? Okay. And has been expanding ever since due to its current size of something like a hundred billion galaxies. People, grown people, believe this stuff. You would think they'd have a brain in their head. The Big Bang idea began with a Belgian astronomer named George Lemaitre back in the 1900s. Uh, according to Isaac Asimov, Lemaitre conceived this mass to be no more than a few light years in diameter. At the very least, that would be two light years or 12 trillion miles. By 1965, they said, oh, it wasn't that big. It was only 275 million miles across, the dot that exploded. Somebody said, oh, no, it's only 71 million miles across. Then by 1974, they said it was 54,000 miles across, the dots getting smaller that exploded. 1983, they said it's a trillionth the diameter of a proton. Whoa. Now they're saying it's uh, a million, billion, billion times smaller than a single atom. And now they're saying, no, nothing exploded. It was, it was nothing, a singularity, whatever that is. This is today downloaded. A singularity exploded and made all the galaxies and everything else. They can draw pictures on paper, and we're supposed to believe it. Discover Magazine, back in 2002, they said, where did everything come from? There's the article. I didn't write it. This is the cover of Discover Magazine. The universe burst into something from absolutely nothing. Zero. Nada. As it got bigger, it became filled with even more stuff that came from absolutely nowhere. How is that possible? Ask Alan Guth. His theory of inflation helps explain everything. Alan Guth said, The observable universe, that's what we see, could have evolved from an infinitesimal region. That's a dot. A singularity. It's then tempting to go one step further and speculate that the entire universe evolved from literally nothing. They are now teaching the kids in school, nothing exploded and made everything. Here's Wiki, Wikiversity, the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory is an effort to explain what happened at the very beginning of our universe. Discoveries in astronomy and physics have shown beyond a reasonable doubt that our universe did, in fact, have a beginning. Yay, they're getting some of it. A little tiny bit is soaking in, okay. Prior to that moment, there was nothing. Maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel, okay. During and after that moment, there was something. So you have nothing that explodes, and now you have something. How many are having a hard time understanding and believing that stuff right there? Okay, me too, okay. The Big Bang Theory is an effort to explain what happened during and after that moment. How did the Big Bang start? The first subatomic particles to be formed included protons, neutrons, and electrons. Though simple atomic nuclei formed within the first three minutes after the Big Bang. They were there. <laughs> and, and, and who was there to record this? Thousands of years passed before the first electrically neutral atoms formed. People read this kind of stuff on Wikipedia, and I did pronounce it right, by the way. And think, oh wow, it's in the, it must be true. I was on the airplane years ago, I've told the story before, I'll tell it again, uh, flying from Dallas to San Francisco, the land of the fruits and the flakes. And I happened to sit next to a professor from Berkeley University on the plane. And we started talking about creation and evolution. Everybody I sit by on the airplane wants to talk about that, so I talk about it with him. He said, he, said he, be he believed in evolution. I said, well, sir, how did the, how did the universe get here? He said it came from the Big Bang. 
I said, well, tell me about it. Tell me about the Big Bang. He said, you're a science teacher and you've never heard of the Big Bang? I said, sir, I've heard a lot about the Big Bang and I believe in the Big Bang, but my Big Bang is a whole lot different than yours. You tell me about your Big Bang and I'll tell you about my Big Bang. So he said, all the matter in the universe was squished into this dot and it was spinning real fast. It has to be spinning. I'll show you why. It spun faster and faster. And finally one day, it exploded and made everything. So this spinning dot of nothing exploded and made all, first it made all the, let's see, what did it make first? Oh, it made the protons first. And then it made the heavy ions. And then it took a long time, long time. And it made cosmic microwave background radiation. And then it made structures. Then it made dark energy. The reason they say the universe is like 80% dark energy and dark matter is because the, they can't explain how the universe can be so spread out. There's billions of miles of nothing and then clumps of stuff, you know, galaxies and planets. And then billions more miles of nothing. Why isn't it evenly distributed? Anyway, that's another story. But the creationists would say very clearly that 6,000 years ago, the Bible teaches God created everything. So their first question is, where did God come from? Well, we start off with, in the beginning, God. And I ask them, well, hold it, what exploded and where did it come from? Where did the matter come from? Where did your singularity come from? Who made the dirt? We don't know. Okay, so we believe by faith in the beginning God, and you believe by faith in the beginning dirt. They're both religious views. Both of them are. An article in the paper, El Paso Times. Religious and scientific leaders debate evolution. No, stop right there. Both views are religious. I never get them to admit this, but evolution is a religious view you have to take by faith. They'll never admit it. They can't. They can't. Because then it can't be tax funded, can it, fellas? Yeah. Anyway, news media always tries to make it look like it is science versus religion. No, it's not. They're both religious worldviews. The difference is between the creation view, which we believe, and the evolution view, which they believe, the evolution religion is tax supported. That's the difference. Now, on this timeline, every inch is 150 years, represents 150 years. If I was to show you the 13 billion year timeline at the same scale, just my chart would have to be 2,100 miles long. That's from Pensacola or Lenox, Alabama to Portland, Oregon. I don't want to carry a chart that big, so I made a new scale. Okay. So I asked this professor on the plane, I said, sir, where did the matter come from? Where did your singularity come from? He said, well, we, we don't know that. I said, where did the laws come from? The universe is run by laws, the law of gravity, centrifugal force, Boyle's law, Cole's law. You can eat that with potato salad. There's lots of laws that run the universe. Where did they come from? He said, we don't, we don't know that. I said, sir, um, why aren't the laws still evolving? Is gravity always been the same? You know, the inverse square law, you half the distance, you quadruple the attraction. You bring two objects that attract each other by gravity to one third the distance. You flip it over, it's nine times the gravitational pull. Have, have the laws ever changed? Or did the laws come into existence just perfect for the way things are, just by chance? I said, sir, where did the energy come from? It takes energy to make something move. He said, we don't, we don't know that for sure. I said, sir, could I ask you another question? He said, sure. What else would you like to know? <laughs> what else? What do you mean else? You haven't told me nothing yet. I said, sir, does Berkeley have a merry-go-round? How many of you know what a merry-go-round is? Okay, you go round, round, round till you puke. Did you grease the bearings on ours yet? It's on your list. I want that thing to go really, really, oh, the kids love it. Well, yeah. Have you seen the one where they put the motorcycle wheel against them and spin that thing? Yes. And that guy goes flying off. Like, what was wrong with you, son? <laughs> People doing dumb things or something, you Google that. Okay, if you put some fourth graders on the merry-go-round, and I like using fourth graders for science experiments because they're tough and they're expendable. So, we're going to put fourth graders on the merry-go-round and get the high school football team out there to get it spinning clockwise as fast as it will possibly go. Now, if you have a digital watch, I left mine up at the house, um, you may not know what clockwise means. I'll explain it later. Okay, we're going to spin the merry-go-round clockwise. The kids are going to go through four phases. They start off in phase one. They're screaming at the football players. Come on, can't you go any faster than that, you big wimp? Let's go. Move it. You get up around 30 miles an hour. The kids enter phase two where they stop screaming. They quietly concentrate on trying to hang on for dear life. When you get up around 
60 miles an hour, you enter phase three where they start screaming again. Only now they're screaming, stop, stop, slow down. Please, stop. Don't stop. This is for science now. Keep going faster and faster. When you get to about 100 miles an hour, you enter phase four where the kids begin to fly off the merry-go-round. Now here's where you notice something interesting. If the merry-go-round is spinning clockwise, when the kid flies off, wah, the kid will be spinning clockwise until he encounters resistance, like a tree or a pole. That's because of a law called the conservation of angular momentum, which says if a spinning object breaks apart, all the pieces spin the same direction. Angular momentum would have caused the sun to spin very rapidly. Actually, our sun spins very slowly, while the planets move very rapidly around the sun. In fact, although the sun has 99% of the mass of the solar system, it has only 2% of the angular momentum. This pattern is directly opposite to the pattern predicted for the nebular hypothesis. This would prove the Big Bang inaccurate. Just our little solar system because of the angular momentum not being distributed properly. Conservation of angular momentum. The orig ultimate origin of the solar system's angular momentum remains obscure. Why do all the planets spin? Why is the sun spinning? Why is everything, why is every, why are they all going around? Where did this momentum come from? One of the detailed problems is then to explain how the sun itself acquires nearly 99.9% .9 of the mass, but it's only 2% of its angular momentum. I agree, difficult problem to solve. By the way, if everything should be spinning the way, same way, I asked the guy on the airplane, why do Venus, Uranus, and possibly Pluto, we can't tell, spin backwards? They do spin backwards. All eight planets in the solar system orbit the sun in the direction the sun is rotating, which is counterclockwise when viewed from the sun's north pole. Six of the planets also rotate about their axis in the same direction. The exceptions, the planets with retrograde rotation, Venus and Uranus. They're spinning backwards. Can't they just turn upside down and be changed? Get a bicycle wheel, like our, in the next room here. We get it spinning on that electric motor. Try to turn it. It's like a gyroscope. Well, Uranus doesn't keep turning over, does it? Just, it has so I read today, I googled, how, how could they go backwards? They said, well, one theory, there's two theories. One is that it flipped over, which I think is physically impossible with the, try the gyroscope, try to flip it over, okay? Secondly, they said it slowly slowed down and then just started going the other way. Guys, there's a third theory that they don't seem capable of understanding or thinking about. God made it that way. Just to make the Big Bang Theory look stupid. That's it. Retrograde rotation. Some of the planets are spinning backwards. We have some theories about the spin of Venus and how it may have been pulled into sync with the Earth. Unfortunately, they don't really work, at least not yet. We haven't exactly learned to decipher the clues, and the theory of the origin of planetary rotation is currently slightly confused. It seems we will never have a theory predicting in detail how a solar system arises from a disk. David, I agree. It doesn't happen. A disk of spinning particles are kind of slowly accre accretion into planets. Dust clouds don't get together to make solids anywhere that I'm aware of. There's not enough gravitational attraction, and all the forces of nature would drive them out away from each other further, not together. If you accrete planets from a uniform disk of planetesimals, those little fragments, prograde rotation just can't be explained. They're admitting it. New spin on the planet, Science Magazine, man, they've known this for 30 years. You can't explain this. As of October 2008, there are 181 known moons in the solar system. 181 moons. Mercury doesn't have any. Venus doesn't have any. Earth only has one. Does anybody know the name of ours? Moon. Moon, right. It's called Moon, okay. <laughs> Mars has two, Demas and Phoebus, and Jupiter has a whole bunch of them. Out of the 181 known moons, 113 have irregular orbits, 94 with backwards orbits. How did this happen from a Big Bang? A spinning object exploded, everything should spin the same way. Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune have moons going both directions, same time. How does it keep spinning now? And billions and billions and billions of years. Well, the spin is slowing down, it would, everything would be slowing down, you know. Uh, so that would put a time limit of some kind, we'll get into that later on. The time limit, okay? You can't have billions of years. But even if you did have billions of years, it wouldn't help the theory at all. 
It'd make it worse because everything degrades, falls apart. Triton, the largest natural satellite of the planet Neptune, was discovered in 1846 by English astronomer Lassell. It is the only large moon in the solar system with a retrograde orbit. Not just spinning backwards, it's going backwards around the moon, around the planet. Whoa, opposite to the direction of its planet's rotation. Hello, how did this happen from a Big Bang? Triton is unique among all large moons in the solar system. It's retrograde orbit around its planet. Most of the other irregular moons of Jupiter and Saturn also have retrograde orbits, as do some of Uranus's outer moons. The Sun has, is 98% made of hydrogen or helium. All the planets are less than 1% hydrogen or helium. How did this come from all the same, same, came from the same stuff? Why are the nine planets, if you call Pluto a planet, which I still do, I was raised that way. How many were you were raised Pluto as a planet? Then it got deplanetized or something else. And anyway, why are they all so different from the sun and different from each other? If it all came from a big bang, where's the uniformity here? Uh, uh, uniformity. <laughs> Some whole galaxies spin backwards. CNN, the Communist News Network, ran an article, Goofy Galaxy Spins in Wrong Direction. The whole galaxy is going backwards? So I asked the professor on the plane, I said, sir, where did the laws come from? Don't the laws ever change? Where did the matter come from? Where did the energy come from? Why are some planets spinning backwards? Why are some moons going backwards? He said, I don't know. I don't know. He said, why do you think it's this way? I said, sir, I think it's very simple. I think in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And God did it that way on purpose just to make the Big Bang Theory look stupid. And it is stupid. There's no kind way to say it. Okay. I do believe in the Big Bang, and I told him I believe in the Big Bang, because the Bible teaches it right here, 2 Peter 3.10. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. That's the Big Bang. So people say, do you believe in the Big Bang? I say, yes, I do, and you better get saved and get ready for it. The Big Bang is coming soon to a city near you, okay? It's, going to all, it's all going to burn. Why would God send his son to die for a people that came as a result of evolution? This whole evolution theory completely removes the necessity of the death of Jesus Christ, or Him coming at all, even His existence. That's really why they're doing it. Why would God send His Son to die for a world created by a Big Bang and evolved by natural courses, sources? Right. If the Big Bang theory were true, the matter would be evenly distributed. It's not. It's lumpy. There's clumps of stuff, you know, called planets, and like Earth, we're standing on a big clump. And then a bunch of miles of nothing. And then another clump, like a moon. And then a whole bunch of miles of nothing before you get to the next planet. The Big Bang is a big dud. Even guys like uh, Fred Hoyle, an astronomer at Cambridge University, said, I have a little hesitation in saying that a sickly pall now hangs over the Big Bang Theory. The Evolution Handbook is an excellent um, book. I don't have one here, but it's about uh, nearly a thousand pages. It's 11 bucks. We got one here? It used to be called the Evolution Cruncher. No, that's not it. No. Anyway, you can order it on our website, drdino.com. Actually, he's got a section on the Big Bang, a section on the cavemen, a section. If you just if you can just get one book, that's probably the one you ought to get. It's like an encyclopedia. Is that it? Yeah, there we go. Evolution Handbook. Thank you, sir. Nearly a thousand pages. Well, I'll be precise so the atheists don't get upset. 992. Is that close enough to call it a thousand? Okay, nobody get mad at me if round I up. round it up. 992 pages. Anyway, it's got a section on all kinds of stuff, including a great section on the Big Bang. How did the Big Bang start? The first subatomic particles to be formed included protons, neutrons, and electrons. Through simple atomic nuclei, few formed within the first three minutes. How do they know this? They're asking the wrong question. How did the Big Bang start? This is like asking the question, why are elephants orange? They're not orange. There wasn't a Big Bang. Didn't happen. It's fairy tale stuff. It all is based on the idea that the stars are moving away from us. And they may be. But there's several other reasons for that. Stars are so far away, they appear to be just pinpoints of light. Did you ever get a chance to go up and look through the six-inch telescope we've got here? 
Richard Reeves' uh, son, David, they've got a 12-inch telescope up there, and they can look at the stars, get a much better view. But through any telescope of any size, it doesn't matter. Get the biggest telescope in the world. Look at the closest star, Alpha Centauri group, Proxima Centauri. If you look at the closest star through the biggest telescope, all you see is a pinpoint of light. You can zoom in on the planets and they start to get you know, visible. You can see the rings around Saturn and you know, the channels on Mars and all that stuff. Never with even any close star. You can't see. All you see is a dot. It never appears to get bigger in your telescope. Never does. So all they know, we cannot see their size or shape. So how do we tell different types of stars apart? For the vast majority of stars, there's only one characteristic feature we can observe, the color of their light. Stephen Hawking said that. Well, now hold it. How many have heard of Betelgeuse? You know, the biggest star, supposed to be so many billion miles around, you know. All they see is a dot. Now it may be, some of the stars probably are bigger than other stars, but you can't, you can't state that as a scientific fact. All you see is the color of their light. After that, it's all guesswork based upon a whole bunch of stuff. Back in 1999, the Houston Chronicle ran an article and said people working at Harvard University slowed light down to 38 miles an hour. Now hold it. If light can be slowed down, how can we use the speed of light as a measurement to measure things? In Dallas Morning News in the year 2000, they slowed light down to one mile an hour. They slowed the light down. Could it be that maybe we've been just plain lied to, maybe we've been made a fool of into believing something so dumb as the Big Bang? And I'm sorry guys who believe in that, it really is. I understand how desperate they get though, because they have to have some way to explain our existence without God. That's what they're really trying to do. And so they're ignoring the obvious, matter doesn't create itself. Where did the laws to run the universe come from? All these, who made gravity? Why doesn't it ever change? Why is it exactly what we need to be, all the, life couldn't exist if gravity was much stronger or much weaker. How can people believe this stuff? I don't understand. Now, if you want to believe in that stuff, that's, I suppose, your privilege, but stop teaching it in the public schools like it is some kind of part of science. No, it is not part of science. It's a religion. And you atheists and evolutionists are using tax dollars to spread your religion. I think that's against the law. Certainly something ought to be done about that. Stop. Or teach all religions. They're not going to do that either. It's real simple. God made the world like he said he did. He owns it. He makes the rules. Don't lie, don't steal, don't cheat. And we're all guilty of breaking those rules. And that's why... Jesus Christ came down and died on that cross to pay for your sins. Mm -hmm. And he'd like to forgive you and save you. And 50 years ago, I said, Lord, I'm a sinner. All the angels said, that's right, Lord, he is. Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Lord, I believe you died for me. I believe you rose from the dead. Would you please forgive me and save me? Something happened that day. I got born again. I didn't understand it all then. I don't understand it all now. But something happened. It'll happen to you too if you'll ask him. Just say, Lord, would you please forgive me and save me? I want to receive your gift of eternal life. And bang, you're one of God's children. You get born again. As many as receive him, John 1, 12, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. That's how you get born again. John chapter 3 talks about being born again. Call our office anytime if we can help. 855-BIG-DINO, extension 3. I'll answer the phone. If I can, I, all day long and half the night. <laughs> I'll get as many as I can. only got 18 messages waiting for me now when I get home. But... Uh, I'll try, I'm trying to catch up. Or call 855-BIG-DINO, extension 1, and talk to the girls in the office about getting our videotapes, or come down and bring a hammer. we got work to do. As soon as you show up, we'll say, hey, welcome. Get to work, right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Lots to <laughs> We'll give you the tour tomorrow, and all your kids the tour on the four-wheeler and the, the mule, I mean. Those guys from the prison love that tour today. I said, you want the grandma tour or the real tour? They said, the real tour. That's good. There were three of them in the back where you don't have much to hang on to. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to tell when a black man turns white, but they were turning white. I tell you what, <laughs> it was funny when <laughs> they had a blast. 
if you want to help our ministry, go and join our 777 Club. We want to, if you want to get saved, give me a call, extension 3. I'll be glad to lead you to the Lord over the phone. Thanks, join, push thumbs up, do all that stuff. See you tomorrow. Bye.